yes. hoppar över till svenska. Den nästa presentationen är också inspelad. En film, det är Miriam Achar från Centrofi i Montreal i Kanada som ska berätta om sitt arbete med immersiva medier. Hon har också varit med i en serie om seminarier om immersiva medier som drevs av We Are Museums eh, organisationen och jag kommer att lägga en länk i chatten till den publikation som blev resultatet av det samarbetet eh, Making Sense of Immersion men nu ska alltså eh, Miriam prata om sitt arbete med immersiva medier på Centrofi. Hello, bonjour. I'm very happy to be with you today. My name is uh, Miriam Achar and I'm Chief New Media Partnerships and PR at FI in Montreal, coming today from the office at the FI Centre in Montreal. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is really to uh, maybe give you a brief history of uh, who we are and what we do uh, before really uh, diving in into today's subject. So, um, found, founded and directed by Phoebe Greenberg and based in Montreal, Canada, FI is a multidisciplinary organization pos positioned at the intersection of art, film, music, design and technology, offering a panoramic perspective of radical ideas focused on collective experience, social impact and audience interactivity, FI is committed to future generations of art consumption. FI actually consists of the FI Center um, that you now see uh, on the screen. The FI Center actually is a building um, that is from 1861. Um, and for Montreal, 1861 is quite old. I know for you in Europe, it's not. But it's a beautiful building located in the art of the old port of old Montreal. FI Studio is the second branch, a uh, branch if you'd like. Um, FI Studio is really our entity that is producing um, immersive experience. What you have on the screen right now is actually our latest uh, production called The Infinite that um, closed in Montreal after three and a half months of operation on November 7th and that um, welcomed actually 70,000 visitors, which is from Montreal a lot, as you might know, we're not London, we're not New York, we're not Paris. So we're very proud of this uh, experience and I'll, I'll try to tell you more about it uh, later on. Um, we also have artists in residence programs and we also have the Phi Foundation for Contemporary Art is the building that you see on the screen. The foundation is dedicated to only contemporary art. Um, um, foundation welcomed um, artists like uh, Yoko Ono, the Chapman brothers, Christian Markley, Mark Quinn, Jenny Holzer, Sophie Kahl over the years. Actually, it's going to be the 15th anniversary of the foundation next, next year. Um, and all of those um, entities, if you if you like, through eclectic programming and a strong emphasis on content creation, FI fosters unexpected encounters between artists and audiences. Um, I'm going to be focused today on the, what we do actually at the FI Center because it's really um, to, to talk to you about immersive and interactive experiences is really probably the best the best channel. But before we, ju we jump in uh, and tell you about the Fi Center, I'm just going to launch a, um, our demo reel.
So in this demo reel, um, you saw actually exhibitions, experiences that were presented at the Phi Center in Montreal, but also in other locations, in other um, part of the world. And I'll, I'll, I'll get back to that uh, later on. Um, so our encounter, if you'd like, with virtual reality um, is I want to say um, started about seven years ago when Phoebe Greenberg, our founder, director and chief creative officer, met for the first time with a Montreal based studio called Felix and Paul um, and where she experienced VR for the first time. And it was actually through uh, their first experience called Strangers it, and that, that's the slide that you have on the screen. Um, Strangers was a, um, a piece that Felix and Paul directed uh, with musician Patrick Watson. And when Phoebe really um, experienced VR for the first time, that's where she really knew that she wanted to be part of this uh, incredible adventure that was, she visioned, she was a, she's a visionary and she really envisioned the, the, the fact that she wanted a fight to be a, a player in, in this world um, in, and to be part of, of virtual reality, this medium. And, and that's how it, uh, it's. Um, so when, when we started to uh, show virtual reality at the center, we really um, started on a very small scale. As you can see, we only had a few chairs and a few headsets. It was actually a way for us to test the water and to see um, if, if our audience, if, if the, the people that are lot, um, used to come to the Phi Center for, let's say, music, event or film screening would be interested in virtual reality. And very quickly, we realized that actually people were very, very curious. Um, we offered it, on the, as I said, on a very small scale and it was free. Um, we came up with our first concept then called the VR Garden where we had a we had a bigger installation but still nothing very very large but you know like a bit more chairs more headset more programming um, and that's where we we that's when we knew that we wanted to go this way this path and and show um xr that's not, now i'm going to say xr uh in in the center that was the beginning for us. And please remember, um, seven years ago, VR was not a, a trendy word like it is right now. Um, so I think we, we can be seen as a precursor in that, um, in that form. Um, interest was quickly generated and one thing led to another. Um, and Phi appropriated this new medium to create grandiose experiences on then not only at the center, but also on an international scale. So what you have on the screen right now is actually an, um, a VR um, pop-up gallery that we uh, presented in 2019 in Venice during the, um, the Venice uh, Contemporary Art Biennale. Uh, and we were open for six months. We covered from the, as I said, the Contemporary Art Biennale until the film festival. Because as you might know, there is right now in the, um, for the last few years, a VR section in the, during the film festival in Venice during the Mostra. So for us, it was really a way to really combine our interest because we are interested in contemporary art, because we are interested in film uh, and technology to be present during those, those events was for us really um, very, very important. So those are images that, um, that were um, the, taken during those, this time in the summer of 2019. Um, we, we are seen as a distributor, but now we also are uh, starting to be more involved as a producer in the XR um, work. So what you have on the screen right now is a visual from a piece called Brief that we actually co-produced with a Brazilian artist. Um, live, um, living, he lives in Stockholm, actually. Uh, his name is uh, Diego Galafassi. Um, and uh, this is a piece that we presented in the world premiere during the Sundance, Sundance Film Festival in, 2000, in January 2020. We had big hopes for this piece. Uh, but then COVID uh, occurred, and unfortunately, uh, we couldn't achieve what we had planned for the for the world tour for this piece because the world stopped literally. Uh, actually, I have to say that 2020 was for us 
a, was supposed to be for us a very important year where we were supposed to have uh, exhibitions in, um, in Milan, in New York, in London at the Saatchi Gallery XR exhibition, but unfortunately nothing happened because of that. But we are now back in discussion with, with those locations. Um, another piece we are very proud of is not a piece that we produce, but it's a piece that we are helping distributing. And it's a piece called Carne y Arena, a virtual reality experience directed by Alejandro Inaritu, famous Mexican filmmaker. It's a virtual reality experience that I personally experienced in Cannes in 2017. And for me, um, this experience was a very important moment um, in my, let's say, career, because I feel that there is before Carne Arena and after Carne Arena. I became obsessed with the, um, the possibility of showing it in Montreal. We actually not only did show it in Montreal this year, but we are also, uh, we made a partnership with Alejandro Inaritu but, and uh, also Immersion Collective to be able to bring this um, amazing piece um, to the world. And if some of you are interested to maybe bring it to your museum or your country, please let me know because um, we are on the, on the international tour for the next five years. It's a large scale installation. Um, so another um, another another piece actually um, that we are very proud of is the Infinite. I, I told you a little bit about earlier. The Infinite is a co-production between Phi Studio, Felix and Paul Studio, and Time Studio. Um, we are literally bringing uh, the audience on the space station. So our partners at Felix and Paul they have a VR camera on the space station for almost three years now. They are bringing back um, visuals to Earth. Uh, and we um, produced an experience um, that is um, approximately, I mean, the space that's needed for this experience is approximately 1,200 square meters um, and can welcome uh, up to 1,000 people a day. As I said earlier, uh, it's going to be closing now on, the, on November 7th. And we will have, have welcomed 70,000 people in three and a half months. So for us, um, we are not only bringing the audience to the space station, but we are also included some, some contemporary art into, into the piece. So we commissioned a um, very well-known contemporary artist called Ryoji Ikeda. This is a piece, uh, an image from the piece um, that you've seen. The piece is called The Universe Within the Universe, because for us, it, uh, you can see from the beginning, since I'm since the beginning, and I'm, I'm a lot talking about co contemporary art also. So for us, this encounter between technology and contemporary art is really at the at the heart of everything we do. So it was very important to bring contemporary art into into this world of of, uh, of the space station. And from the 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 comments we get from our audience. I think it was the thing to do. And as I said, uh, we're very proud of it. It's a big success. After Montreal, it's actually going to Houston, um, which is almost, you know, like it's a natural because Houston is the city of the NASA. Uh, it's going to be in Houston from December to April. And normally, if everything goes well, um, we're going to be touring the Infinite for the next six years. Um, um, hopefully, not only in North America, we want to bring it to Europe, we want to bring it to um, Asia. Uh, so it, we are in discussion with a different location. And again, if you're interested, please let me know. Uh, send me an email and I'll be happy to tell you more. Um, we spoke a lot about VR. Um, we are not only interested in VR. Um, I, I spoke about XR earlier, So, but um, uh, augmented reality, mixed reality, Projection is at the heart also of what we do. So this, those images that you see that you've seen on the screen are images from uh, the exhibition that we presented at the Phi Center in the summer of 2020. Um, so, like probably like you, we had this uh, window of opportunity where we were allowed to reopen after um, spring 2020, 
So we reopened for three months because we had to close again uh, in the fall of 2020. But we didn't want to bring back VR right away because we didn't know how people would react to, you know, wearing a VR headset on a public space. So we brought experiences, we presented experiences that involved uh, projection, um, screen-based uh, installation, um, and it was actually a big success. So for us now, it's really part of, of what we like to present. Um, immersion, even though the word right now I think is maybe um, a bit too too used, um, it's really uh, at the heart uh, of what we do and what we present at the center in Montreal, but also in different location in in. Um, we also presented in the past um, experiences that blends um, virtual reality and theater. Uh, to me, when when um, live acting and virtual virtual reality meets in an experience, it's it's very very powerful. What you see on the screen is an experience called "Believe Your Eyes," produced by Punch Drunk. Uh, I'm sure you all know Punch Drunk, this uh, immersive um, um, this studio based in in England that produced "Sleep No More," for instance, but other pieces. Um, this was a big success. We showed it in Montreal. We showed it in Venice also uh, during our pop-up in the, during the Biennale. Um, we also brought works by a French studio called DV. Uh, we brought a piece called Alice that involved uh, actors. We brought a piece called uh, Horrifically Real Virtuality that uh, involved actors. Uh, and again, very successful. Um, so, as you can see, we really like to, um, to test a lot of things with our audience in Montreal. The, uh, the Montreal audience is very open, very curious, um, and, and they are, um, they love what the, the, they love what we, what the, our offering because they, um, they are always very surprised and, and, um, yeah, they, it's 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 great for us to be to test actually a lot of things in Montreal and then go on the road. Um, now I, I would like to talk talk to you about a, an initiative what what which was actually uh, born uh, because of the pandemic and it is VR to go. So as everybody, uh, as all of you, uh, we had to close our uh, center in uh, on March 13, 2020, um, and very quickly. We regroup with the team, realizing that it wouldn't be something that will last only for a couple of days or a couple of weeks, but longer than that. And the question was, how do we keep the contact with our audience? How do we make sure that people that were um, used to come to the Phi Center to try VR, for instance, how do we bring VR to them? And that's how vr to go uh, was born. Um, so just um, in, a, in a nutshell, um, it's a system, it's a project where people are renting VR headsets from us uh, on which we chose, we, we uh, program a curation of 10 films, uh, films that are coming from, from different festivals uh, that won um, awards in different film festivals, uh, it's all 360 works. Um, so the, the headset was delivered to people's home. Remember spring 2020, I, I don't know how it was for you, but in Montreal, people were really staying at home. Nobody was going outside. Um, so the, the headset was delivered to their home. They would keep the VR headset for 48 hours. And then somebody was picking it up, bring it back to the center. Everything was clean and then sent back to somebody else. Um, we launched the project, uh, let's say, on a Thursday, and on a Friday, everything was sold out. So we knew that at that time we had something very powerful. Um, we had, just for your for numbers for you, we had 75 headsets in circulation on the island of Montreal only, because we, we really wanted to stay on the, on the island. Um, and um, so during you know the time where the Spice Center was closed, we offered VR to go. Yes, we offered other stuff, but this is really um, the main project that uh, kept us busy during uh, during this first lockdown. When we were allowed to reopen in the summer of 2020, we decided to keep this offering because we wanted to see if the success of this offering was only due to the fact that every, everything was closed, or 
Is it something that could that had legs and could um, go on? And actually, the answer is that it had legs because even today, a year and a half later, we are still offering VR to go, and it is very very successful. Uh, and um, so we learn something. We learn from the pandemic. Something we will keep from the pandemic, if if you'd like, is VR to go. Um, Last but not least, um, the role of mediators um, for uh, immersive exhibitions is absolutely crucial. Um, I am at the center, the number one fan of our mediators. They know it because Every time we launch a new exhibition, every time we meet before the exhibition opens to the public, we I do it, you know, like we do a, a team meeting, and I always tell them that I'm their number one fan because their role is actually so important. Their presence is going to make a difference on um, visit on the visitors' experience. So our mediators are not only to help people, let's say, to put the headset on, because yes, this is one of their tasks, but it's more than that. They are welcoming the audience, they are helping them with onboarding, and when I say onboarding is really meaning that they are preparing our audience for um, what they, they're about to uh, go through in VR, and they are there at the end of the experience, what we call the offboarding. So, the role of the mediators is really crucial, as I said, and, and for us, of course, um, it, it makes the operational costs very high, not, I'm not lying, but it is so important. Um, and just to give you an idea, since we started um, to present a virtual reality at the, at the FI Center, we hired over, um, I think, 60 mediators that are working with us as part of our um, of our VR um, experiences and installation. Well, maybe just to, to finish on, uh, on what's coming for us in 2022, um, as I said earlier, it's a very important year for us. Uh, it's the 10th anniversary of the FI Center. It's the 15th anniversary of the FI Foundation for Contemporary Art. Uh, we are uh, looking to the future, finally. We feel that I don't want to say the pandemic is behind us because it's not, but um, we are in discussion with different museums, different uh, galleries in the world to bring uh, our work there, but also looking for collaborators and partners uh, that are really uh, understanding what um, immersive uh, can, can do for a museum, for an art gallery. We strongly believe in democrat democratization of, uh, of, of the access of, to technology for us. Um, it's really one of the reasons why we do what we do. We want everybody to have access to technology and to, let's say, VR headset. And uh, we see it that a lot of people that are coming to the FI Center or to other experiences that we, um, we present, they, they are doing VR for the first time. And for them, it's really, uh, it's just an, an incredible experience. Um, Maybe just a brief um, word that we, we will, I cannot tell you a lot, but we will uh, launch a new building in 2025. Um, so please stay in touch because again, um, looking at the future and uh, doing more and more uh, stuff in the immersive sector in Montreal. Um, maybe just one, because we're not doing a QA and a because it's, it's pre-recorded, um, I was asked maybe to answer that question. What is, in my opinion, the, great, the greatest pitfall to avoid for museums starting out on a new immersive uh, media project? Um, I'll, go, I'll go back to what I said about mediators. Um, this is a very important point. Do not underestimate the, um, the role of, of uh, your staff that are um, walking, working sorry, on, on, the, on the floor where the exhibitions are happening. Their role is crucial. Um, no, don't, do not underestimate the, um, the technical aspect uh, of, of XR. You, it, you need to have experts on, uh, on location to be able to troubleshoot because technology is technology and it can fail sometimes. 
uh, and uh, this is really I think the two um, the two um, most important thing I would say that um, you should not underestimate. Well, thank you for your time. I really hope that um, you learned a little bit uh, and I would be thrilled to be in touch um, if you have any question. Um, Miriam Masha and my email address is mmasha at phi.ca. Hopefully, I'll meet you one day and thank you for this invitation.